Welcome to Melt in Your Pocket, the show that tastes as good as it looks. I'm your host, Andrew Seely, and this is your chocolate bar review show. We're outside in gloomy San Francisco, but I found a chocolate company. His name is Cho, and it's where technology and chocolate meet. So let's go inside, meet some people, and taste some chocolate. Why don't I give you the quick 30 seconds about uh, how we present how chocolate's made, yeah? Okay. I'm going to step right over here, so check this out. Ooh. So, uh, it, sticky. Yeah, it's sticky. Yeah, sticky, I learned about that on the space shuttle. Um, <laughs> it captures the dirt from your feet. Oh. Uh, so it all starts with cool farmers, and they grow this very strange and alien fruit that buds on the side of trees. It starts with this tiny, tiny little orchid-like flower that's the size of your pinky, and these, these weird-ass pods just kind of just come, come right off the tree. You split it open and it has this very white, strange material on the inside of it. That's the cocoa bean. It's got this mucilage around it. Then some good folks take the machete and they split the, the, the pot open and they scoop out beans, which is called baba. That baba um, is put into big piles or in boxes for fermentation. It lives up to seven days in fermentation to cook the beans thoroughly. And then it goes into drying, which is this big rack system up here up in bamboo. And at that point, it's ready to go into roasting. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much bean, post-production bean processing. And then at that point, that's when we convert it into liquor. And how we do that is we roast it and then crack it and then separate the shells from the bean meat, which is called winnowing. And then we take that and we um, crush that together and it turns into a liquid. There's no water in chocolate. It becomes liquid-like. Um, but it's all the fats that are just kind of um, been exercised in the bean. So it's like a peanut. You squeeze a peanut, you get peanut oil and, and, and peanut flour. Same thing with cocoa. You squeeze the bean and you get peanut, uh, you get cocoa oil and you get uh, cocoa powder. So from there, um, that's pretty much when we get to cocoa mass or cocoa liquor. And from there we actually grind that down with sugars. And then if we want to go further, we can conch it, which actually is the process, the French word for shell. That's where we actually um, uh, exercise it with hot air blowing on top of it. It changes the flavor because the oxygen in the air binds with the acidic acids of the, uh, the, the bean meat. And it, it removes um, unwanted flavors off. It's called a you know, kind of flavor changing step. So then after conching, we actually go into the tempering unit, which is actually what um, gives the, temper, the chocolate its snap after it's cooled. It's basically where it's aligning all these triglyceride fat chains together into this one neat little tight package. And then it gets molded, cooled, and then wrapped up, and you eat it. That's kind of chocolate in, but a bit. Because on, on my show, I've been tasting a lot of different bars that have stuff in them. And, and a lot of the ones that are coming up have a lot of things in them. But you guys take this unique approach of taking just chocolate and then modifying that to bring out the other notes as opposed to adding in that flavor. Yeah, that adding in is cheating. Uh, but the um, but we actually the further take one step back it's actually where we come up I came up with a plan. Actually that's how we sourced the beans for, for these flavors. So we found beans that had the flavors. For example the, the fruity we went through thirty two different bean samples before we chose that one. Wow. And um, we so we're pretty obsessive about it. But then we do a lot of tweaks in, in the fermentation as well as in the, the um, refining part of the process, the cotton part of the process, to make high and low temperatures come to pull certain flavors out and bring certain flavors in. And the alpha free is more representative of where we're going. I understand that. That is just a little app, it's just sugar and meat, no vanilla, there's no nothing yet, it's just really raw, it's great. So this program is where we take, we kind of tax ourselves uh, an amount that we actually put back into the program. So every ton we buy, on top of the fair trade price, on top of our premium price, on top of the other reach goals that we give them, like saying, here's, here's fair trade, here's a premium, and then if you actually hit this quality, we can give this much more. So even on top of that, we still put X amount of dollars aside to fund the project inside the company. So that, and when we say fund it, we actually make investments in capital infrastructure. We don't give them money when it comes to this latter part. We don't give them the money to actually buy stuff. And so we know it goes to direct, you know, capital improvements in the region, communications, the growing stuff, all that kind of stuff. So I think for a tiny little product in Capri here in San Francisco, it's pretty, pretty advanced. We're not big flag waivers. We're not like, we don't put the, the uh, ink stamp. 
they don't put the um, you know big we're big and green and you know all this kind of stuff. It's just that's why you don't on our on our website you don't see a lot of stuff about Chili Source yet, which it's yet this thing that's really kind of the meat, the, the, kind of that the spine or the pulsing heart of this thing. In some ways, I think it's starting to come that way. But yeah, it's really really keen observation. It's very nice to hear that because that's that was the idea, right? This heavy design, you know, and, and when it comes to um, you know the whole thing and you know, all the way through from the business models to the, the partnerships to the Product line and it's bringing that, that, that web 2.0 and, and kind of open source yeah. aspect to an industry, the food industry or the yeah. chocolate industry that's not been seen um, ever. And I think that's really unique and, and hopefully you, know, you guys are the trendsetters for that as well. No, that was one of the keenest observations I've, I've heard yet. And frankly, it's really nice to hear since that was kind of, um, uh, there's kind of a forest and trees thing. You know, you're just moving so fast you don't really have a, bigger and grand to be able to know it and know how it's being received externally because it's, it's, it's just not easy. But that, you, what you're reflecting on is really the pure intent of the design from the beginning. It's like to have a lot of thought and design and, and uh, you know, um, I don't know the best way to describe it. I mean, a forethought. I didn't want to be redundant in my words, but I'm mean, just really thinking it through really deeply and then and then have it come up with a design and sticking to it as best that you can. Everything changes once you start, but the main thing is I try to make it so that I call it scratching the surface where it's like you look at it and you go, you know, oh that's kinda neat and pretty, but you keep on diving in. It's like, man, they thought that through, they thought that through, you know, and it makes it makes people kinda go, you know, you turn things over like, God, these guys are thinking it through, right? But it's not evident on the surface, right? It's very downplayed. If you want to learn more about Cho, visit them online at tcho.com. And if you want to win your very own Cho sampler pack, all you have to do is leave us a comment and tell us what you love about San Francisco. You have a full week until Tuesday, August 18th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to leave a comment. Always follow us on Twitter, MIYP. Follow me on Twitter, Andrew Seeley. And you can always become our fan by going to facebook.com forward slash MIYP. Continue to love the things that you're passionate about and continue to share that love and passion with everyone you know. When I was a kid, I saw, I saw Willy Wonka 12 times. Mm -hmm. I, while I was in its run, like I said. <laughs> so I'm not Willy Wonka, I'm more Charlie than I'm Willy Wonka.